Here now is Lisa Bell and Candace Campos with Florida Foodie. Sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. Hello, welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm Candace Campos, joined with our producer extraordinaire, Thomas Mates. Hello. <laughs> and today's guest has opened a first of its kind restaurant near Winter Park, just a brand new. We're talking like two weeks old. So it's really exciting that um, we're so happy to be joined today with Wilson Santos, the owner of Fry Shop, a shop that was inspired by trips to Amsterdam. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. So when I asked you, you were inspired. You're like, I'm not from Amsterdam. I'm, mm-hmm. I was born and raised in the Bronx, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so give us a little background on how the Fry Shop came to be. Uh, I mean, this is this concept is like decades in the making, to be honest. Um, I went to Amsterdam. The first trip was in 1994. I was doing a study abroad program in England. And on the weekends, I would try to take a trip around Europe. And I just took a trip with some friends that I had met in England, went to Amsterdam, and I saw these fries. <laughs> like, what is this thing? You know, I see all these people walking up and down the street holding these cones and just eating these fries. And I'm like, what is that? Then you see these little fry shops all, all around, They're like snack, snack shops. Almost like a walk up just window, and then there are lines of people just lining up to get these fries. I said, I gotta try this stuff, you know. So we tried it, fell in love, they have all these different sauces, and I started, you know, buying one, walking around, being a tourist. Mm -hmm. Saw another shop, bought another one, tried a different sauce, and that was it. I would eat like two or three of them a day, and I I found it fascinating, and I just thought, why don't we have this in the US? Mm -hmm. This is 1994. And then eventually in the US, a couple of shops did open up. Yeah. And I really feel like it's not just the art of how good your French fries are. It's also the art of the sauces from what it looks right. like here on, yes. on, yes. on the table. It, it really is all about the sauces. You know, mm-hmm. fries are fries, but when you add the sauce and the toppings, that's what really makes it. That's what. And then the beauty about it is you can, like I said, I was walking around having two or three of them a day because there were plenty of fry shops around the streets. Mm-hmm. We don't have a lot of fry shops in Orlando. I think we're probably the first and only one, but... Every day a, a guest comes or a customer comes, they can try different sauces, the different experience every time. So you can try crispy fries with one sauce or skin on fries with a different sauce. So it's a different experience. You're still eating fries, but your experience is, is different. How many different so, varieties do you have? So we have uh, original sauces. I have uh, 10. And then since we opened, I discovered something that I wasn't planning on, but people want just regular ranch or regular blue cheese, or mm-hmm. just buffalo sauce, or mm-hmm. just barbecue Us sauce. Us Americans, you know, yeah. it doesn't take much. <laughs> so we added, I added those as options as well. And, uh, but the European concept is more of a mayo. And, and so the reason I call mine a Dutch-style cone fries and not Dutch cone fries is because we're not officially Dutch. We do have some Dutch uh, sauces. You look very Dutch. You know? yeah. <laughs> it could be. It could be. The wooden yeah. shoes. Yeah. For those listening to the podcast, he does not look Dutch. <laughs> we, um, so we have people, like Dutch people coming and mm-hmm. wondering, are we really Dutch? You know, mm-hmm. Are we doing what, what they're used to? Are we serving what they're used to? And I said, we do have some options, but we also have, we're in the U.S. So we have other options that cater towards this market, which would be like the Chipotle Garlic cilantro, you don't get the, those flavors out no. in, in in Europe, you know. So mm-hmm. we're, stuff I mean, is closer to home. And I, I would feel like here, especially in Central Florida, it's a great place to do a fry shop like this because you yes. get all these different flavors from what Central Florida has become, such a melting pot. You right, get the correct. cilantro and lime, you get a more of a Hispanic twist, yeah. you get mm-hmm. more of the barbecue style, southern yes. flair. So, yeah. I mean, do you feel like that's like... That's one of the reasons why this this concept could work here. Yeah, I think so. I think it's um, it appeals to a much broader market. If it mm-hmm. was just a Dutch flavor, Americans aren't used to having peanut butter on uh, peanut sauce on fries. You know, is and that then a thing? it is a big thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Shockingly, in okay. in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, so it's peanut sauce. They have this this fry called war, the uh, Amsterdam war fries, and war fries are peanut sauce with mayonnaise and white onions on top. Now that's, they call it that, I think it's a clash of flavors. It's a mm-hmm. war going on in your mouth with all these different flavors. Mm-hmm. Americans aren't used to that. So yeah. if, I got, if I just did European style uh, sauces, we still do well, I think, you know, but we also have a broader market that in America that needs to, we need to appeal to. And that's the Mexican flavors. We have a Kansas City barbecue mayo, which happened by accident. You know, one day I was grilling burgers in my house and I realized I didn't have any ketchup. I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, I need some, something. So I took some Kansas City barbecue, some mayonnaise, put it together, put some spices in it, 
and we created a sauce just like that. Everybody that was at the barbecue loved it. I'm like, I'm going to put that on the menu. Nice. You know, so there's that. And then we have the curry is, uh, is used a lot in Europe. Um, the peanut sauce is used in Europe a lot. Samba Olek, you know, that one is also used. That's a spicy, a really nice spice sauce. But, yeah, we have a market here that we need to cater to as well. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I figured I'd try to hit a broader market rather than a more narrow market. So yeah. the fry shop is very new, but this isn't your first rodeo. You've, you've worked in the restaurant industry for a long while. Can you kind of walk us back through some of your other... How far do I have to go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not all the way back to yeah. 94. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've been in more in the nightlife industry than in the restaurant industry mm -hmm. a lot longer. Um, as I started out as an event promoter. So I was doing parties. I, I at 20 years old I started, mm -hmm. so it was 1990. <laughs> and I, I I was doing parties. I you know started bartending, managing bars. Um, so I have a long history as a bartender. And then I opened my first bar here in Orlando uh, in 2015. We got the permits, but we opened in 2016. That was uh, the Vinyl Arts Bar that nice. I told you about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Randa, a beautiful bar. Yeah, it was a nice bar. You know, it was, it was catered towards an art crowd. We started with a beer and wine license and then eventually grew from there. It, I rebranded the place a couple of times, so it took different twists and turns. Mm -hmm. um, but I was there for five years. I felt like I needed to do the rebrand in order to survive. Sometimes uh, concepts get a little bit stale. They run their course. Rather than selling and moving on, I was like, let's take what I have and rebrand it. So I built a small kitchen in there, um, and I turned it into Mama Juana Latin Bistro. And that was right before the pandemic. We transitioned to that, and we're doing well with it. Uh, we were serving tapas. I was grilling uh, uh, churrasco, and it was more of a nice fine dining experience. So it's a group concept. We're doing small plates. People are sharing good cocktails. We had a liquor license um, in that space. So it grew from uh, a beer and wine art bar to a fine like Fine Dining Tapas Lounge. Mm -hmm. Still very nightlife oriented. We still brought the DJs in and we had dancing on the weekend. So, And then the pandemic came, kind of with killing my dream, <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> right. And we were about to lose that. I, I rebranded it again, right? Just I was weeks away, literally weeks away from shutting my doors. I couldn't pay rent. We had just a little bit of money. We got an e e EID loan from the government and they were you know, trying to help small businesses. And I rebranded as Vinyl Cafe. So this concept started in Orlando at that cafe. Uh -huh. So, I, I mean, I can say this because it's legal. <laughs> I, um, I came up with an idea. I said, I need to make it more casual. At the time, you know, you couldn't have groups of people in bars. Remember, we'd mm -hmm. like take out only for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then it was 75% occupancy and then 50% occupancy. They just kept changing, trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. I have a tapas track. lounge. You couldn't, yeah. you know, couldn't yeah. keep up and... I have tapas, you know, nobody's ordering tapas takeout. So, yeah. I, so I was dead. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't have groups of people. Tapas is a share place. You go in groups of people. You know, mm -hmm. We had dancing and stuff, and we couldn't do that. So I came up with another rebrand to make it casual in order to survive. And, we, and I created called, what we call Vinyl Cafe. So the decor was vinyl, and I brought in hemp. So hemp was like marijuana, but it's legal. Mm -hmm. It's 0.02% THC. They sell it at all the smoke shops. Mm -hmm. So I created a way that looks like marijuana, smells like marijuana. It doesn't have the potency. It's much more relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's completely legal. So I created a way how to make marijuana, not marijuana, hemp pre-rolls. Mm -hmm. And I jarred it up and put it right next to my liquor. And, it, and I just mm -hmm. displayed different varieties of it. And I created similar to a, an Amsterdam coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Where the you know you have menus and different varieties yes, of that, yeah. <laughs> so it seemed like a, you had the experience of coming to a coffee shop, but you smoked hemp. It wasn't getting anybody high. Mm -hmm. you know, right? yeah, but yeah. It kind I of mean, Amsterdam's easy. not just known for the fries. <laughs> no, they also have you know, <laughs> they, <laughs> that was another experience in 1994. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> yeah. So we you know I, I try to create the Amsterdam vibe mm -hmm. in at the Vinyl Cafe, and that was 2020, and that's what I came up with to, to save the business. And I introduced this for the first time. And I got these, and I got the cones, and I said, I want to make that Amsterdam experience that I first experienced in 1994, fast forward to 2020, what's going to save this business? And so I put about six different sauces on the menu. I did the, the cone fries, and then you have the hemp, and now people are smoking hemp. They're eating the fries, and they get the whole Amsterdam experience. Nice. And that's what saved that business. I, I didn't go under. And then six months later, I was able to sell it. 
Congratulations. I mean, that's it's hard because, I mean, yeah. ever since we started this podcast before the pandemic, and I remember the conversations changed drastically yeah. Yeah. over yeah. the year and yeah. over the months. So yeah. I was glad to see that. And so um, where is now, where is the fry shop now located? So we're at 489 North Semaran Boulevard, and it's actually Winter Park. But okay, it's like, it's very close to Castleberry, so we've got Castleberry a few minutes up the road, mm -hmm. and then uh, Orlando, it's on the border of East Orlando as well. Um, we're a few blocks up from Full Sail University, just a, a light up on uh, from University Boulevard to Aloma. Mm -hmm. So we're right on the corner of Semaran Boulevard in Aloma. Really um, high traffic intersection for us. So yeah. we've been blessed to start there. And near, and near the near the school, too, which is also right. a win-win, too. Yeah, we've got over 20,000 students at Full Sail. Mm -hmm. um, we've got of course, a lot of faculty and staff that work there. Um, in the plaza behind us, we have Aveda Beauty School, which is a blessing. Right. They've been a bread and butter to get started. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've been blessed to have those students come. Aloma High School is right behind us as well. Unfortunately, high school students don't have a lot of money, so you know, <laughs> they, they, they're not a big customer of ours. Yeah. But, but we're employing them. We've got two kids from Aloma High School. Oh, that's I've got awesome. another kid from Winter Park High School. But this is a perfect yeah. like after school, like yeah. you know, a couple of a couple of the kids could you know put their money yeah. together and share a little that, fry or have. something. And they have we'll see? two or three of them, and they you know somebody they get buy creative. Fries. Yeah, they yeah. Do. the kids have been. But uh, the beauty school has been a big blessing for us right behind us. Um, so big, when, up, big up to Aveda. Yeah. So when you when you walk in to the fry shop, what does it look like? What's right. the ambiance? Is there seating? Is it more of a bar setup? So no, it's a fast food concept. Okay. Um, we don't have any seating at all. It's a small building, 500 square feet. We do have a drive-through, and mm. then we have a pickup window. So there is no seating. Um, it's grab and go, just like in Amsterdam. There's no seating in these fry shops. Right. You know, you grab it at a window, and you just keep on walking, and you you know go around the city sightseeing, and you buy some more. And so it's just a grab-and-go concept, very fast, uh, very efficient. Mm -hmm. um, we are creating, uh, just put a um, uh, request for permits with the uh, county last week on Thursday. So we want to create a garden area in the front. We do have a patch of grass that's about 18 feet by 18 feet. Okay. Um, it's got some bushes there. We're gonna, I'm going to put um, artificial turf, put some decorative bushes around it, and put some picnic tables with some umbrellas. And so we, we are working on that with the city right now to see if we can get that approved. It is true, though. I feel like Europe does really embrace the whole um, the window experience in Spanish called the ventadita, like the small yeah. little window that you kind of just walk through. You have your little coffee, you have your little right. fry, you have something, and you and you keep going, right? Yeah. So I think that just that works hand in hand with the yeah, fresh shop. Europe is very similar to New York. It's a lot of foot traffic. People are walking. Mm -hmm. In Orlando, nobody walks. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nobody's walking around. So we do get to. Be, the school helps us because they walk. Mm -hmm. you know, they walk to their car, but they grab some fries before they get to the car. But nobody's walking around. Um, and so it works really well over there. This concept is, it's, uh, I think we spoke about the grab-and-go um, beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll work really well at music festivals. Um, people are grabbing and they can just keep walking. Uh, shopping centers, malls, for instance. Um, airports even, you know, yeah. airport kiosks. Mm -hmm. And people are just walking to their terminal, to walk into the gate. Just grab some fries as you walk. So it is a grab and, and go concept, the beauty of the cone. Yeah. Um, and the aesthetic of it too, you know, they're really, really cool looking. And we get a, we get a lot of smiles when people, we hand that cone over to people, yeah. like, you know, like little children. Like, they're, they're laughing and <laughs> like, nice. this is so cool. I mean, who can say no to French fries? No, really, right. everyone loves at fries. At the end of the day, right? <laughs> Everyone loves fries. And when I did the Vinyl Cafe, I realized that everyone's loving the fries. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were limited in our market uh, to 21 year olds, to nightlife people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very small, segment of the population and i said this has to go to a broader segment you know mm -hmm. children grandmas uncles aunts you know church people on sunday afternoons they want to come and have some fries i can't keep this trapped in a small bar yeah in downtown mm -hmm. you know so so since then i've been trying to get this concept off the ground so it's been about four years in the making now all right can we try these yeah are absolutely. these real they don't yeah. look real yeah they? they're real it yeah. smells real yeah so yeah. what's what's this little these little so, the, so this is our regular size. We we sell these for five ninety five. We have a much bigger one. It's huge. I don't know how people can get it. <laughs> um, bigger than this. Bigger than that. Yeah, it's bigger than that. It's seven. Uh, that one's seven ninety five. So it's still affordable. You know, very we, affordable. We make them very affordable because uh, we we target the students a lot. We have mm -hmm. a lot of students in our area. We have UCF fifteen minutes down the road. Okay. Full sale down the road. That one is uh, really good. That's the um, cilantro, okay. garlic cilantro, our most popular sauce. Okay. This is our boom boom ranch. And you've got um, scallions on that. That's mm -hmm. the most popular stuff. We go through jars of this stuff. 
I could swim in that sauce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I spoon it. Really I just eat it. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, it's good. Oh, food. that's good. Yeah, cool. The, thank and you. the fries are crispy. Yeah. They hold their flavor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The boom boom has a little bit of a kick. Mm -hmm. um, it's not boom. bad now. Mm. Yeah, they, so we we use mayonnaise. A lot of our sauces are mayo based and mm. kind of tames it down. Um, so the, mm. the spice on it just gets brought down a little mm. bit with the mayonnaise. So and it creates a nice little yeah. balance. Those it. go well together too, because like that little yeah. bit of heat here and the lime kind of sinks with yeah. that really nicely. Mm -hmm. That's that's really good. Do some yeah. people kind of order a couple and they all yeah. like? Oh yeah. I'll have yours and you have mine. Yeah. And kind of switch up a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yes, so that's, that's and that's what we we look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we look for people to try and every day. Like we get the Vita students, they'll come two three days in a row. And every day they'll try a different sauce. So, the, you know, again, the whole experience of uh, you get different flavor bursts in your mouth every time mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. And if you change the fries, you also have a different, you know, perspective yeah. on it, too. So you can change the fries, too. Yeah, so we have the skin on fries, which are more of like a hand-cut fries, a more natural natural cut. And then we have the crispy fries. Those are, are coated um, with a, like a flour base, so they're crispy. They hold a little longer. Mm -hmm. But these are more of a European style natural cut. You got the um, skin, you can still see the skin on them. And are you cutting mm -hmm. these by hand? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, oh. <laughs> <laughs> not. You That'd know, be a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You know, there are the fry shops that do that. In Europe, a lot of them do that. Mm -hmm. We don't have the space, the capacity right. to do it right now. Maybe in the future, we might transition to that. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're, we're limited. We have 500 square feet, and we're doing what we can with this. Yeah, you're, you're doing a lot. And yeah. you said you've only got about like six employees right now, right? I've, I've got six employees. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking to hire a couple more. Mm -hmm. we're, what? This is a naked fry. Can I try one of these Yeah, sauces? so which which ones we've got? I don't know. Okay, so I've got the mayo ketchup. This one is like a smoky mayonnaise ketchup. It's okay. got Worcestershire soy sauce. Yeah, try saying that Worcestershire. Um, yeah. <laughs> what else we've got? Uh, mm. This one is the curry. Mm. So this one is used a lot in Europe. So that's a curry What's your mayo. favorite? What's your go-to? Um, I, I like the boom boom. I like mm. the sambal. I, like, I love the spicy flavor. Um, and uh, also the garlic cilantro, you just can't never go wrong with the garlic. That curry is good too. Mm. That curry is nice. What's the smoke flavor in that? So it had, so we put liquid smoke in that. Liquid smoke, so yeah. So it gives you that barbecue kind mm. of smoky flavor. Yeah. So that's got soy sauce, Worcestershire. I think if I pronounce it correctly, <laughs> <laughs> nobody can. Nobody can. Worcestershire. Yeah. And then the, uh, we've got smoked, um, the liquid smoke in that. Mm. Um, ketchup, mayonnaise, and a couple of other spices that we add to that. Really good. Um, the curry mayo, if you want to try that. Really yeah, cool. This one is chipotle, so we. And so you've mentioned it a couple of times, that. you know, like this is some place you'd like to see a lot of foot traffic and, and things like that. Yeah. So what's your, what are your plans? And in, in, you know, in your in your head, what would be a, like mm. the ideal expansion yeah. for you? Obviously, like the way I designed it, and I took a long it took a long time to get it to where it is, even mm -hmm. from the color selection to the logo, mm -hmm. um, trying to brand it sim sim uh, simple brand. I am looking to expand. I think this concept is very scalable, mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned already, um, more kiosk. Uh, we can do music festivals, so we can go mobile and small food trucks or trailers. Uh, beaches are, are great. Uh, so, Metropolitan cities yeah. like New York, yeah. where a lot of people. It's kind of like a boardwalk sort of food. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can grab and, and go. You also don't feel like there. you're eating like fried dough or like, yeah. or like this is kind of nice. It's airy. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's you know, yeah. it's easy to mm -hmm. share too. So yeah, you don't feel like you have to sit there and eat the whole thing. Yeah, like you said, I see people share. You know, we'll, mm -hmm. they'll eat a little and then we'll split. It's kind of like tapa style, right? Yeah. Kind of, right? It's it's food to share. Very much like that. Yeah. So I do envision this growing into a. And, and it can take different forms. It can be just the, the Fry Shop Express where we're only selling cones because at the Fry Shop we also have loaded fries. So we have a, like a Mexican uh, birria loaded fries. So uh -huh. we have, at the end of the day, we have full meals. They're meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. We have a such <laughs> They are literally meat and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, the full meal. You know, so that's, that's, those are in price ranges from eleven ninety five to the most expensive is fifteen ninety five. And, but you get a full meal. Like right. most people don't finish them. They, they our portions are pretty generous. Mm -hmm. So people are sharing them or just putting them away and eating later. And then these are more of the snack stuff. So, you know, the fry shop can be a just a cone concept or it can be both. You know. Yeah. And so that's the idea. Yeah. Keep expanding. And we were talking upstairs a little bit uh, as we were heating up the fries. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you were saying that this your 
you're only two weeks in, you're still kind of working at about like 60% capacity. And yeah. As you said, you have a couple more people, you know, so you're not even running on all cylinders just yet. Like, how do you foresee the next, you know, month, six months going? Well, I know that in the next month, we'll be at 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to add uh, delivery, so we have to add DoorDash, uh, Uber Eats, those mm-hmm. are the two big ones. Um, we haven't even marketed uh, heavily to the student population right down the street, um, full sale. They have over 20,000 students. Um, this is affordable food for students. I was a college kid. You guys probably were the same, and you know we're, yep. we're broke. Mm-hmm. You know, so we were looking for economical food, and it's filling. So we haven't targeted to them yet. We haven't done the garden area that we want to do in the front. We haven't put in enough lighting out front. So there's a lot more to do. So a lot of baby steps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, and I'm I'm happy this way. I'm, I'm glad that we're not. We didn't just launch everything at the same time because yeah. we're still developing our process every day. I'm, we're learning new things. Um, we change things and how mm-hmm. we how we process the food, trying to keep it fresh, not putting too much out at a time. We with smaller amounts to keep it fresh oh, yeah, and rotate sure. them. So there's a lot of little kinks that we're working out, which um, and, and we need to get our, our good team together. We we need to follow the team before we get to that hundred percent operation level, and then we'll be able to you know. Yeah. We're ready for war. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. this looks like something that you've been wanting to do too long for so long yeah, that it's, there's almost a, almost like a relief in your eyes when yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. it's open, <laughs> it's it's going. It's, it. it might be sixty percent, but yeah. God, it's sixty yeah. percent. Yeah, no, we did it, and I and yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm I'm working on the small steps to get us to where we're, we're going to be eventually. So we are, you know, said a, a six months, a year from now, we are in talks with a, a place called Violet's Garage in uh, in Kissimmee. That's uh, nice. creating a like a food hall concept where mm-hmm. they have an event space, a brewery. On Those are and, uh, huge right now. Yeah, yeah. They're really becoming mm-hmm. a they're, thing. They're becoming, yeah, yeah. It's like uh-huh. a, you know, a, I think it's like a food court, mall food court, but mm-hmm. for adults, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Without really, having to really shop, like right? Yeah, <laughs> you, know? shop, you just go there for the experience. So yeah. we, it works really well for us because you don't even have to commit to us. You just buy some fries. You can still have our fries and another meal. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you come in those food halls, you get one plate and you got all these other. I wanted to try these other things, mm-hmm. but I can't. With us, start with us, yeah. and then move on to the next, and get yourself a meal. We'll we'll be happy to sell you, you know, five ninety five cones all day. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, Wilson, thank you so much. So, when if people want to look out for you, you already told us your address, but yeah. um, social Instagram. Yeah, Facebook. we're on social media. So we I, I started this, the uh, Instagram page last year. So I've been teasing it for a long time before I had a location. Okay. Before I knew we were yeah. even open, I was like, "It's coming." It's coming. That's a you know, I, uh, yeah. I was um, looking for investors for a long time. I had presentations and meetings, and nobody wanted to invest. Nobody believed in it. Um, you know, people said I was asking too much. I, I'm glad I didn't yeah. get any investors at the end of the day. It, was, it would have been a mistake. So it, things happen for a reason. You mm-hmm. know, I ended up. Um, I couldn't get funding for it, and I didn't have the money. I, you know, I'm a risk taker. I sold my house. To buy it, to get to invest into this. Oh, yeah. I had a beautiful home. We got <laughs> a beautiful fry shop now. And, now. and I'm renting a house now, you know, right right across the street from the fry shop. And I was like, you know, I'm going to risk it all. I sold my house and at a great rate. Mm-hmm. You know, was like that post-pandemic rate. Yeah. <laughs> before they yeah. went out. But I, I, took a ch- I took a chance and mm-hmm. I just, I, I, I threw it all into this because I, eventually I'll buy another house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I needed, it. To do this, uh, I needed to do this now. Well, we can't wait to see what what this becomes and continues to be. So please keep us. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, one day we're we're at another spot that you're opening somewhere yeah, in, in Central Florida. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe Kissimmee would be nice. I don't know. Yeah. But we, you know, I'm not going to stop until we have multiple locations. I, you know, I'm persistent when it comes. To that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't rest. That's awesome, yeah. Wilson. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us Appreciate and it. keep us posted. Yeah, I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna keep eating. Yeah. <laughs> Are we didn't get through all the other stuff. Oh yeah. Thank you for listening to Florida Foodie. We'd also like to thank our guest, Wilson Santos. You can find his business online. Just search for The Fry Shop on Instagram and TikTok. Be sure to follow Lisa Bell online. Search Lisa Bell News on Facebook and Instagram. You can also find Candace Campos on social media. On Facebook, search Candace Campos News 6. And on Instagram, search Candace Campos WKMG. Also, a big thank you to our entire production team, I'm the show's producer, Thomas Mates. Please take the time to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you stream podcasts. And you can find videos of all of our podcasts on clickorlando.com and on YouTube. Just search for Florida Foodie.